This video is sponsored by the following people. Please click the links in the description below. Yeah, look, the fact that you can forge stainless steel is well known. There are very good makers. Debbie Thomas in the States makes very good stainless sandmire. And you can go to Baalbach in Germany. He sells a whole range of stainless steel Damascus, basically made out of stuff like 440C and N690 welded together. So that when you etch them, and of course, Dana steel, although there's his powder met steel, uh, they're, packed, they're, they're done differently. But it is all stainless steel and it all does get welded up. I don't know how Baalbach do it. I know that with Dama steel, all their stuff is done under, probably under vacuum or very high levels of reactive gas, keeping the surfaces clean. Theoretically, the principle of welding up stainless steel, solid phase welding of stainless steel, is exactly the same as for a carbon steel. Clean surfaces, the right temperature, the right pressure for the right amount of time, and the crystals will grow across the joint boundary and make a sound single piece of metal. So yes, it works well. In practical terms, it's not so easy. You can get the surfaces as clean as you like with a grinding machine. One tip I'll give everybody, a lot of people think, yeah, degrease as well. You degrease before you grind, never degrease after you grind, because if you degrease after you grind, there will be minute traces of crack in your degreaser and they will evaporate and leave the crack on the surface. I learned this the hard way at university when we were trying to forge weld steel and aluminium together or roll bond it through a heavy rolling mill. For as long as we did the sanding of the surfaces and then degreased it and put them together, it didn't stick. As soon as we did it the other way around, it stuck like crap to an army blanket and it was brilliant. So remember, don't degrease after you've done any grinding if you're making Damascus. But the main thing with stainless steel is that you can get it to weld, but you've got to get this chromium oxide off the surface. Chromium oxide is very tenacious. This is why when you buy stainless steel pots and pans, they stay stainless and they stay stainless for a long time unless you overheat them on the gas and then they discolor but that's all you'll get that's just a different color of oxide but they stay shiny because the iron is not touched by oxygen or water the chrome oxide on the surface is totally impenetrable and nothing can get through it therefore if you want to forge it onto another piece of steel whether it's another piece of stainless or onto a piece of carbon steel you've got to get that chromium oxide off the surface The method I use is to put it into a canister. I purge that canister with a reactive gas. What I mean by that is a gas that will react with the uh, chrome oxide on the surface when it gets up to a high enough temperature. Bearing in mind, you're talking about 11, 1200 degrees. There's a chemical reaction between the gas and the chrome oxide. Oxide is lifted, it leaves the chromium behind, and then when you forge weld it, it sticks together. I've had great success with doing this, uh, making stainless clad sand mine. So I, what I use is a 01 core material, but I don't use a stainless steel that stays soft on the outside. I mentioned in a previous video that laminated materials with a hardenable core and soft cladding are prone to centerline cracking and that's not what we want. I've done quite a bit of experimenting with using a hardenable stainless cladding, the same stainless steel that you use to make a stainless steel knife from, and I put that on the outside. We developed a subsequent heat treatment procedure that will normalize everything and allow you then to harden up the core, and so far I haven't had any signs of cracking or delamination whatsoever, so it works. But yes, it's not the easiest thing to get right, it's not the easiest thing to control, but it can be done. And again, it's down to that very, very simple, clean surfaces, the right temperature, the right pressure for the right amount of time. And they will stick together and the crystals will grow across the grain boundary. The other thing is that once those crystals do start to grow across the grain boundary, providing you keep everything clean and free of oxygen, holding it up at a fairly high temperature will allow more and more crystals to grow across that grain boundary. So again, when you're forging it, you tend to hold it at high temperature for quite a long time before you go through to your next forging process. That allows more crystal growth across the grain boundary. It also cost me a lot more money in gas. So again, don't belly ache when I charge you a high price for it. It will be good stuff, but it's, it's not the cheapest thing or the easiest thing to make. But yeah, we can do it, we can do it quite well. I must admit in a future video, you might see it where we've been experimenting literally with stainless Damascus. We're two different types of stainless, yeah. But that's, that's one for the future.